Hi, I'm Marta Bello. This is my video rewind on Shmoo. I was so excited about doing the first, the, my first ever video. I always find videos frightening. There's no easy way of saying it, especially when we look back at that. I know, I'm looking at that and now and I'm seeing four guys that came off a gyro. Suddenly we had cameras in front of our faces. Oh my God, look at me there. I can look as if I, could, I was clearly unemployed before this video because I'm extremely skinny. But um, yeah, I, look, I, I always found them very long days. But to see that there, I mean, what age was I? I must have been, what, 20 years of age there? So it was our first time really in front of cameras. And then we went and did this video. You know, a, a record company said, oh, we need a new video, because at that time, everybody did videos. You know, the Duran Duran boys and all that. They did big, epic videos. But I think we had two bob and a balloon for our first video. But we were happy just to be doing it. You can see the enthusiasm on their faces. I still, to this day, I don't, I don't get mo most of the videos from that genre, where suddenly you see a random person holding a fish. You know, there's no, there's no rhyme or reason here, but somebody's, it makes sense to the director, but we just roll with it. Ah, oh, sweet little mystery. Let me tell you this, the record company had came to some sort of deal with the, the resort. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, would you call it the plane company, the flying company? So you, uh, there you go, at the beginning of the video you had to put in the, the, the aeroplane company. So that's how we managed to get over there. We had just had the success of wishing I was lucky. And we were in the studio and uh, they said, do you want to go to Gambia to film a video? And we were like, aye, you know, we'd never been, we'd never been abroad to that part of the world. So we were super excited to go to Senegal and spend some time there and then on, onwards up to the Gambia. Uh, but ah, I just remember it just being a great laugh, you know, four guys let loose and, you know, a beach with, you know, some good tunes and ah, it was just a great time, that. I loved that video. And you can see the enthusiasm in my face there. We're just happy to be working. Sick of leaving in the morning with the night you gave away now I'm gonna take that all that I can Angel Eyes. Top tune. Yeah, this was, uh, you know, uh, that was a long day. I think that was a two-day shoot, that video. Yeah, I've got the skinniest tie known to mankind on that. Wearing there a suit that's, uh, I think it's all safety pinned at the back. No, because we had to hire suits, because we didn't own a suit. That was my mommy's favourite uh, video. Because it was inspired, you know, we got, uh, it was inspired, the song's inspired by Martin Luther King. You know, so, there he is in the video, you know. So, yeah, powerful song for us. And uh, it's still a favourite to this day, you know. Still sing it, love it. At that point, by the time Angel Eyes was a hit, you know, we're very much ensconced in that uh, teen phenomenon, which took us by surprise, but, you know, it was nice to be in the Beatles for a, for a few months or a few years, you know, because we were just having a laugh with it. But it was, it, sometimes it could be a bit like that, you know, when, when you were on the front covers of magazines and stuff like that. It's a nice thing to have in your career, but we always knew that it wouldn't be, that, that would be a transient thing. You had to deliver music, hopefully, with would carry you through that, and I think that's what what, what it did back then with those with those great classic pop songs. Temptation, yeah, you cl clearly money's coming in now. <laughs> yeah, I loved all that. Yeah, we did that. Uh, it was Mardi Gras. Oh, there's Machin. She's uh, a Hollywood actress, quite famous. Machin Madness. She's. Uh, Twin Peaks, she's a lovely lady, and I think it was just Dominic Sienna that did this, this video. When one make Hollywood movies and stuff like that. It's a, it's a bit of an epic video, that one, it's really beautifully shot, and the cinematography's superb. We're a bit embarrassed though, because we were still trying to get our heads around acting. Yes, stand over there. <laughs> Smooth. You know it, girl. Ah, my favourite wait, 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 song that we wrote together. Yeah, this is one of these. I never quite got this video as well. That's, I mean, the imagery was quite nice. You know, some of the imagery was nice, but that's one of those ones I, I still don't get the, per the person swinging on the pendulum. And, but, you know, 
I grow my hair there. So. Brand new look, yes. My man grows hair. <laughs> man can shave now, you know. Uh, the passage of time starting to go there. Uh, yeah, that, this was uh, the first ever pen number one. It was a great day, you know, I loved it. I, I loved, enjoyed that because I loved the Atombra, the, the palette that I drew from, it was all Atombra colours and just seemed to complement the song. And uh, yeah, my first ever number one. You know, I, I felt great, you know, to get uh, my first number one uh, self pen song was just fantastic. My ma was so made up. It was my mammy's favourite song as well. That was one of her favourites. When I went to see her after I went to number one, uh, I went into the kitchen, she had a t-shirt made of the charts. Oh my God. you got to love a mammy, haven't you? So if you really love me, come on and let it show. Whoa. Love is all around, about one of the biggest selling songs of all time. Yeah, love is all around. Filmed in New York. This guy here went on a day. <laughs> yeah, the director in this, he did all those uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies. <laughs> so that was, a, that was a strange combination to be working with him. He also did the Julius Head uh, video for us, and it was, it was a follow up to this. That was a song that was recorded in uh, two hours. I never thought much of it, and then suddenly the irony was it became the biggest selling song of that particular year. And, you know, I think it. Months and months at number one and sold millions and millions. And where did that? How did that happen? I don't know. I was living in Capri, the island of Capri. We were, I was living there, and uh, I just remember flying in the, the wet jet to do Top of the Pops all the time. Good day at the office, that. Uh, most of that summer, most of that five months was spent in Capri writing and recording. There was a studio there that we liked, and uh, every Thursday we'd just go to the wee private airport and go there. And, sing songs and we were just laughing because, you know, we were still number one and then you come back and you laugh, we're still number one. You know, I think eventually we just decided not to make any more copies of it. We just put the song to bed, give somebody else a, a shot. And it was one of those songs that was just recorded in an afternoon. And the same way, getting by with a little help from my friends, from the Sergeant Pepper knew my father, I, that was recorded in an afternoon. So both of my, well, two of those number one songs that I had basically were recorded in two hours. You don't think about it, you just say, right, record it, okay, that's it. And then there's other songs you have a labour of love, it takes you months or a lifetime to do it. And then a song that you don't think about, boom, it's the biggest sermon song, or one of them of all time. And beauty reaches for the light From the shadow of your smile Into my arms Oh, that's a, yeah, close to you. There's actually six people in that chair. Kevin Godley did this this video, and I'd worked with Kevin Godley on the Sweet Surrender, because uh, uh, I'm a big 10 CC fan, and I love Godley and Cream's videos. They were they just made them incredible. And so we worked on. Uh, he's like, listen, I've got this idea. We'll put six dancers, and they create that. So there's six people in that, and they would be morphing. And I met one of the dancers ten years later, and they said it was one of the worst gigs in his life because they're in that PVC thing, that that chair manipulating it. I think that's from my first solo album, Smile. Yeah, I think that was the first single from it. Uh, in a band, you've got to be... Uh, uh, we, we'd always try and get as much of each individual in because that was a, that was a band, you know, it wasn't just Marty Pell, you know. And so it's important that other, the, other, uh, the other writers also get the credit that they deserve. You know, and that's, uh, but yeah, that's unapologetically me. I never thought that we'd ever change 20,000 dreams falling off the page Feeling so on fire Oh, these are the days. Yeah, you know, and that, that uh, you know, uh, it was important to me that I had, um, these are the days about, uh, the, the song is about me growing up with my mates and just running with the dogs when we were young kids, not caring the world, just feeling the sun in your back. And it was important to me that I tracked down some footage of uh, of my hometown of Clyde Bank, and that lives in the fabric of the, the video. I found a little guy who did a lot of uh, cine amateur uh, films of my hometown before it, it changed. I really enjoyed doing these are the days, and it was just a great, it's just a, a great wee pop song. You know, that's from the Stargazer album. I think that's my last solo album that was. But aye, simple song, simple video, me driving about. We just, I think we found, might have found that in lockdown. You know, so the, you know there wasn't there wasn't you know there wasn't much going on in the city, so we had free range to it. But we did have permission, so we were okay. We did follow the rules. I, I love that. I love that video because it reminds me of my hometown of Clybank, where I grew up. That's special. <laughs>